The date is Wednesday, April 26th. I'm Lewis Morals, and this is a Market Bull Update. President Trump has announced his long-awaited tax reform plan, which proposed to slash corporate and personal rates, leave popular deductions in place, repeal the AMT and estate tax, do little to close loopholes, and not include any new taxes on imports, truly making this the Oprah car giveaway of tax cuts, except without billionaires having to pay for anything. The plan could add trillions of dollars to the national debt, and should be vehemently opposed by Republican deficit hawks, except those mythical beasts only exist during Democratic presidencies. Trump's business background taught him the shrewd negotiation tactic of giving everybody what they ask for with no downside while bankrupting his company and enriching himself in the process, which a career politician would be too stupid or ethical to think of. A trade-off is defined as a balance between two desirable but incompatible features, with this plan delicately balancing the administration's desire to pass a popular piece of legislation with genuinely not giving a shit about anything else. Co-founder and former CEO of Sun Microsystems, Scott McNeely, claims that businesses are relieved that eight years of economic waterboarding by the Obama administration are over because apparently waterboarding is only upsetting when it happens to businesses, not real people. McNeely's hatred of Obama could be due to the 96.6% decline in Sun's stock price from the start of 2001 to the start of 2009, except that experts have referred to that period of time as the Bush administration. McNeely went on to claim that every job that's in the public sector is basically taking a job out of the private sector, which is an excellent point, except for the fact that it's patently false. McNeely continued, the worst CEO is a thousand times better than the best politician at his job, a claim that could easily be tested by comparing him to the best politician. Chobani Yogurt has filed a defamation lawsuit against right-wing conspiracy theorist Alex Jones for falsely reporting that the company was connected to a 2016 child sexual assault. Chobani's practice of hiring refugees to work in their factories has made them an enemy of the alt-right, who truly seem to believe that giving a job to someone who fled a war-torn country is the same as raping children. Mr. Jones has said that reports of the rape by Syrian refugees working for Chobani has, quote, been all over the mainstream news, which it has, though always followed by, quote, is not true. Jones has also claimed that 9-11 was orchestrated by the U.S. government and the Sandy Hook school shooting was a hoax, though I think we can all agree that it's up to the free market to determine what is or is not true. Turning to earnings news, shares of Boeing are coming down from an all-time high after they reported a strong quarter that still came in below lofty expectations, much like when you expect to get upgraded to first, then get pissed off when you end up in business class. Shares of Twitter are up sharply on accelerating user growth, stemming a downward trend that had been pathetic, hashtag sad. The company said that it's made progress towards removing accounts that demonstrate abusive behavior, which we hope includes booting trolls and boring idiots who tweet every mundane detail of their lives. I don't fucking care what you had for lunch. Costco announced that it's returning cash to shareholders with a huge special dividend of $7 a share though their stock is only up slightly on the news, a show of their commitment to bulk deals at low prices. Chipotle's stock is up on earnings that destroyed expectations like E. coli does a digestive system, though the gains were limited by news that their payment system was hacked. We always thought that a Chipotle hack was ordering a burrito bowl with a tortilla on the side, getting you 15% more of all ingredients. True story, give it a try. Pepsi reported a mixed quarter, with cost controls helping profits, but revenue impacted by a consumer shift towards healthier items, with the company now generating 45% of revenue from what it calls guilt-free products, which include new orange soda and 7-Up with 30% less sugar. I am similarly guilt-free when I only blow 70% of a bag of Coke. Finally, the U.S. government is facing a shutdown if Congress can't agree on a spending bill by Friday with funding for a border wall and Obamacare subsidies threatening the agreement. Republicans are already blaming Democrats for any potential shutdown, despite the fact that Republicans hold control of all branches of government and President Trump's all but openly stated goal of destroying American democracy from within. 
Democrats are likely to respond by rolling over and accepting blame, given that they are and always will be complete and total pussies. This has been a Market Bull Update. I'm your host, Lewis Morals, reminding you that Market Bull will be off till next week as my colleagues and I figure out which yacht to buy with our new middle-class tax break.